COP26 that starts today. The G20 was a little bit of a doldrum because we didn't get some of the pledges that a lot of people were hoping for. What does it mean for your expectations for COP26? Well, I think a, a couple of things. I'm going to quote the Secretary General's hopes unfulfilled but not yet buried. Uh, the one and a half degrees anchor in the, the G20 communique is significant. Uh, some progress, but we've got a lot of work to do. What we the, And the big question for this week, at least for this Wednesday, is what can finance, and more specifically the private financial sector, what can it do uh, to help solve this problem? So it's going to really have to step up, and there's been a lot of institutions, a lot of people around the world who've been working in order to do that. Yeah, we don't even have a price on carbon yet. When will we get that? Well, we don't have a price on carbon, but what I, I think our message on Wednesday uh, to world leaders, uh, to policymakers, to business people around the world is finance is going to be there, and finance is going to be there in two respects. One, we're, we've, we've retooled the financial system. We've changed the plumbing, if you will, the financial system, a bunch of very worthy reforms that actually, to be honest, only the audience of Bloomberg would fully understand and appreciate, and we can go through them for the next hour. Um, but, you know, think mandatory disclosure, yeah. think stress testing, all that. So part is retooling, but then it's also about financial institutions stepping up and say, saying that they are going to finance this transition, this enormous $100 trillion transition that needs to happen over the next three decades. They're going to finance it, and they're going to mark their own homework. They're going to right. show up year in, year out, say what their emissions are of their clients, um, have specific strategies uh, for reducing carbon, fair share of 50% down by 2030. That's what the Glasgow Financial Alliance is all about. Why not stop actually putting money into fossil fuel full stop instead of talking about the transition? Well, you've got, I mean, we're living through uh, problems with the transition right now in terms of we have both far, far too many fossil fuels in the world. We're going to have enormous stranded assets, half yeah. of gas, three quarters of coal, etc. Maybe up as much as half of oil reserves, proven reserves, mm -hmm. need to stay in the ground if we're going to get to where we are. But we also have local short-term shortages of some of those exact materials. We're here in the UK, there's a shortage of the storage of gas. So there needs to be some, only some, limited uh, financing for a transition, but only for a transition, which is why you need things like GFANS that are relentlessly, ruthlessly, absolutely focused on that transition to net zero. And not just any transition, a one and a half degree transition, but which, sorry if I may, which is what G20 leaders signed off on yesterday. But the G20 leaders didn't stop, for example, coal from being used domestically. Yeah. And, and so we're doing progress, but we're going at it slowly. Well, uh, we're doing progress. We need to accelerate it. Uh, we need to recognize there's differences, and as, as there obviously are, between advanced economies, developing economies. Uh, some of those, there's a, there's a different timeline for fully ending coal. We want to stop coal, not just new coal, but stop use of coal by 2030 in the advanced economies. That's what powering past coal, which is a big element of, yeah. of COP26, is about. But also by the end of the next decade in the emerging developing world. And if I may, again, to bring it back to finance, um, to give them the confidence to do that, they need to see literally a wall of money that's available for their transition. So when they're building up alternative energy, uh, that the money is going to be there. Who could do better in finance? Is it the asset managers or the big banks? Well, what, what we're going to reveal on Wednesday is who's doing the best. Um, yeah. And so from sneak asset peak. managers, uh, sneak peek, well, look, the, the problem is it's a $100 trillion problem. And so the question is who's stepping up for the solution? The members of G fans, so those who are in Net Zero Banking Alliance, Net Zero Asset Managers Alliance, the asset owners, the big pension funds, stepping up with these commitments, and then we need to channel them to where they're needed the most. How much stress is there at the moment amongst the asset managers that actually some of the ESG labeled products, then if you yeah. probe, are, are not green? Well, uh, well, look, there is some stress, and it's great that there is that. It's not great that it happens, but it's great that there's, there's that pressure. scrutiny yeah. and there's that skepticism or healthy skepticism about ESG labels or sustainable labels. And that, again, is one of the reasons we're having this ruthless, relentless focus on net zero. Because in the end, look, we can't stabilize the climate unless we get to net zero. And it's a simple, these are hard numbers. Your emissions right. are either A or B. They're going up or down. And if they're going down, are they going down consistent with the science? We anchor it in the science, the same science the UN and others use for the one and a half degree this objectives. Not be compulsory? Should we not have regulators yeah. coming in and saying, look, this is a new definition, you yeah. stick by it, and we're going to so, measure it. So, I, these are great questions. So let's look at what happened with TCFD, climate disclosure. Yeah. Six years ago, you and I were in Paris, we talked uh, about this, we talked of other things. Now that's moving to become mandatory, compulsory, after after that period of time. What we're talking about in terms of net zero disclosure, uh, moving that to compulsory, absolutely. I think we have a couple of year window where best practices develop, 
by the private sector on what exact information is used. Yeah. Stakeholders make those judgments. And then, yes, I think uh, those ju uh, jurisdictions, major jurisdictions, should make this compulsory. I mean, economically, we're at the crossroads because of the energy crisis, because yeah. of inflationary pressures. It d does it worry you that actually it puts the transition backwards a little bit? Well, I mean, if I were a policymaker, I'm not one uh, at, at the moment, always but if heart. I were a policy, I'm always a policymaker at heart, and I care about the economy. Um, look, I, I think one of the opportunities to turn the easy bit of the recovery has been reopening our economies. Yes, there have been some frictions, but we've gotten that boost of growth with reopening. Now we need to sustain an expansion. We're only going to do that with investment, business investment. Business balance sheets are in pretty good shape. If you have directions such as moving towards a net zero economy, we have huge, huge investment. That 100 trillion figure I mentioned has huge positive GDP yeah. multipliers as it comes forward. So that's the opportunity to unleash, to turn recovery into an expansion. But are, so if we get a temper tantrum, I don't know whether we do a taper tantrum. Tem temper ta ta temper taper tantrum. <laughs> yes. well, then what does that mean for ESG um, product appetite? Uh, well, again, uh, what I'm looking for, what, you know, so when you look for where to be in uh, financial markets, given a situation which, you know, yes, there is an adjustment going on on interest rates, uh, I'd rather have this adjustment going yeah. on in interest rates rather than slipping back into a liquidity okay. trap, which is where we were. We were on the cusp of a liquidity trap for many years after the financial crisis. So now as global interest rates are moving up, ideally what's happening is real interest rates are moving yeah. up. Because we're getting the kind of investment and kind of returns that we need, that's sustained recovery. You want me to stop? You're having a we tantrum. We have to stop. I'm having a, a time tantrum, but we'll get you back on, Mark Carney. Thank you for joining us.